Boom. Those Friday afternoon feels, the knockoff boys are back on deck. Here in the studio, joined by the regulars, Danny and Chris. Got the full, the full compliment. It is, Friday. It is yeah. <laughs> Feels fucking good. Joined this afternoon uh, by a special guest. Uh, Uncle Keith. Uncle Keith. He's, <laughs> he's on board. Whilst it is... He's into it straight up. Whilst it is always a fun time for us to sit around and talk about tales of how we got pussy in high school or <laughs> fucking stole... Or, or stole how we yeah. didn't. I can, <laughs> I can go back to long-term, long-term memory for that. That's one. it. We, how, how, or how we stole vehicles in, in high school and no, shit like that. But uh, that. we also see the value in bringing on interesting guests and picking their brains. So Uncle Keith is here. He's a fitter and turner by trade. Twist, uh, twister and turner. Twister and turner. Ooh. Get it straight, son. <laughs> Is that in the cot or at work? Uh, <laughs> both. You'd have to get there to understand. Yeah. <laughs> there's technology. You might, yeah. there's you, technology. Might yeah. you might never get the invitation. Ever made love to a man? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you want to? Not, the, not that I can remember. Uh, <laughs> or recall. Twist, uh, twister and turner slash firearms and ballistics expert as well. So we understand that we... It's not something that Australians have a wealth of knowledge in. I know, speaking for myself, I, I definitely don't. It's, we're certainly not America, where it's as simple as walking down to the, uh, the local corner store and buying yourself a firearm. So we've got Keith on. going to ask him a whole array of shit, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Absolutely. And, and I think it's probably one of those issues that um, we were probably discussing before the podcast. You know, it has a lot of contentious issues really based around it you know like there's a lot of really mixed feelings and a lot of sort of um you know hostility and 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 different sorts of opinions that really go with with firearm use in australia and, and we're going to hopefully uh, you know touch on a few of those so um yeah welcome keith and and probably like the first thing that i, I guess we wanted to kick off with is um you know just give us a bit of a rundown about um about yourself you know like um when did you when did you sort of kick off shooting man when when did it sort of start for you oh uh, look <coughs> i suppose when I, was, when I was a kid, I mean, I lived on a farm. I, I lived in a rural area. Uh, my father was a target shooter. I can remember going to the range with him when I was 12 or 13. Yeah, he, right. he shot in Toowoomba at the, uh, at the range and, you know, I was on the... You know, I think it's called the range, the range range, because it was on the range, the Brisbane range. And is, yeah. that, is, that like, is that like skeets or is that targets? No, no, it was, what it was full bore shooting when they, they shot the old 303s in those days. So. And, and what, what, explain what full bore is. What is, it, what is that? Uh, full bore what, what was then and still is now. It's what, 30 calibre, which was the, what was the military round, which was 303 in those days. And ironically, I've still got my father's 303, so an old two, right. gro- old two groove uh, long branch was made in Canada. It's a great rifle. I, I, I cherish it and I've... I shot and I shot and won an Australian title with that, which is so. Is that right? Yeah, that was, I, that was uh, only a few years back, wasn't it? Oh, more than I care to remember. <laughs> 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 but you won a, a medal recently at some competition, like uh, I want to say, like 2013 oh, look, look, or something. I'm, maybe I'm, I'm an average shooter. I shoot with a lot of people that are in Australian teams, and and um, yeah, I shoot with a lot of good shooters. Yeah. Um, and as you get older, you sort of tend to plateau out a bit, and you you're never as good as you used to be, but you you sort of. You never give up. And shooting something you can do for a long time. You can mm. do it from... We, we've got junior shooters at, at Belmont. and I, I mean, AA Brisbane branch. And you know, we've got guys there, oh, older than me, you know, up in their 80s. And, and, yeah. and, and kids, you can start as young as 12, uh, legally target shooting in a range. And, and, and you can be female or male. It's not, it's not segregated by, mm. by sex. I right. mean, we, you know, male, female shoot together. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not a sport that's sort of... Uh, Exclusive. Gender driven. Yeah. 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 So, so as soon as you were old enough to be able to shoot, you were you were on a range with your old man. Oh uh, no, not really. My, my actually, my father would never let me have a firearm until I was okay. seventeen years old. So oh, I mean, right. I, I, did, I did a lot of uh, you know, yeah, observation of people shooting. I mean, yeah. Uh, as kids on farms, I mean, I never had an air rifle, but all my mates had air rifles. I made sure <laughs> I made sure they were, they, they weren't a mate unless <laughs> they had an air rifle. <laughs> And so was, was that typically, I guess, growing up on, on property and, and whatnot, was that, was firearms, I suppose, uh, something that would be used on the property? Well, I mean, they're just, they're just another tool. I mean, mm, I yeah. mean fire, you know, firearms are another tool that farmers use all the time, I and mean, whether it's, you know, eradicating feral animals or yeah. putting down stock, it's, it's just something you have, it's just another tool you have in, mm. your, in your toolbox. Yeah. Probably, yeah, and I think that probably only, only really became alarmingly apparent to me recently in that... Um, 
we had an instance on, I work on a construction site that's, that's fairly remote and there's, there was a, a cow that got stuck in a, in a cattle grate and, um, and was a black cow of a night time, stuck in the, had its legs stuck in this you're cattle be, grate. You're not, you're not being racist here, are you? I mean, it could, no, it, it, no. could, have, been, it yeah. could have been any colour. Yeah, what does colour got to do with it? <laughs> um, and one, one, of the, one of the drivers came through in a, uh, in a Toyota Hilux at about probably 90 kilometres an hour, I didn't see it. And, um, and actually connected with this cow and, and obviously, as you can imagine, you know, like did the did the cow some serious fucking damage, you know. And um, so the camera... Cow- and the car as well or...? And the car, yeah. yeah. And the, the cow was actually still alive. So um, so the, the guy's actually come back, the cow's still alive. He's then proceeded, like, you know, seeing how ugly the situation is, is like, God, I've got to put this cow out of its misery mm. sort of thing. So has got a, a, a lifting sling from the back of his ute wrapped it around the neck of the cow that's still in the cattle grate, like, and thought, yep, I'll just hook this up to the tow bar, drive off really hard, snap the cow's neck. So he's, he's hooked it up, driven off as hard as he can. He's just spinning his wheels on a, on a you know, three-litre diesel Toyota Hilux. Wow. And then, so he pretty much, you know, after, after a good 10 or 15 seconds of doing that, like, pretty much says, yeah, all right, cut it, cow's, cow's dead sort of thing. And then so they... Um, so then, obviously, the cow's just pretty much sl- sitting there limp in the in the cattle grate, <laughs> and then they as you would be. Oh no, and, and I don't I don't mean to laugh because it is horrible. But like he he walks back, takes the sling off this cow's neck, and the cow goes, oh. <gasps> like takes a breath. Me you know, myself like, and I mean, Irene. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, me yeah. myself and Irene spec sort of thing. And and they were just at their wits end, standing around, going, "What the fuck are we going <laughs> to do? Like we cannot physically club this thing to death, even because it's you know its head's too hard." And then, yeah, sure enough, the, the farmer comes along with his shotgun and boom, out of its misery in, in you know, two seconds flat. You know? That's so. brutal, man. The roughest thing that I, I reckon I've ever had to do, like I've never been hunting or anything, but um, I, had a, I had a cat a few years back that basically took the most of the stomach out of this tiny little sparrow out, the, out in the backyard. So this thing was basically breathing, but, but on its last leg. So I just wrapped it in a towel and gas bottle to the uh Oof, to the bird yeah. and concrete sometimes it's the best felt way the, yeah. felt the little pop like exactly right i was doing it yeah. out of a humane exactly. uh thing yeah. but yeah still, yeah, yeah, yeah. still oh, pretty definitely. fucking hard to do anything that's suffering doesn't yeah doesn't need to endure it for any longer than it has to i was I mean, gonna yeah. i was gonna and, say and, you and, and a firearm's a pretty quick a pretty, yeah. pretty quick mm. demise i mean if it's put in the right spot and, and it's pretty instantaneous yeah and so there's like uh there's a few areas we can we can jump around with your you know shooting and hunting and stuff like that but i guess if we're sort of going like a little bit timeline spec um so you sort of grew up around farms obviously and your dad was into um into uh sport shooting as well and that's something that you've continued on you're also into hunting what what is it sort of is it just everything that interests you you love it all or is there one sort of thing that like yeah that's that's my bag that's like you know the hunting because because you go out uh like you know outback australia and stuff like that a fair bit as well it's it's a bit of everything i mean i think the technical part of it, being a fitter and turner, um, right, right, of or course. twister and turner, or whatever you want yeah. to be, but it, it sort of lends itself to uh, you know working on firearms, building firearms up. So you know, I enjoy both sides, but I enjoy the yeah. shooting side, but I also enjoy the you know the side of, of the of engineering make, side make, of making something, firearms, make, yeah, you know, and accurizing something, and just sort of yeah, it's a bit a bit of both. So what, what's your what's your flavour? What do you what do you shoot predominantly if you, if you go go shooting, or it really depends on what style of shooting you're doing. Well, I, I predominantly shoot what they call metallic silhouette, which is which is shot standing up, uh, freehand. It's a fairly difficult discipline to shoot. It, it makes you a good shooter in the field because you don't always have a tree to lean against, and you don't always have. Um, I mean, I, I prefer not to because I, I, I've done it so often; it becomes an involuntary. It's an involuntary thing. You stand there, you look at something, and your feet go to the right spot, and the rifle comes up, and everything, yeah. everything just flows. But I mean, you know, I, I, mean, I shoot. I've been shooting silhouette for probably 25 years and, and mainly 22 because you, shoot, you can shoot that at night time and it's cheaper to shoot and, you know, the principle's the same. The, technically, it's the same. Uh, I shoot centerfire as well. It's a bit more fun. And, and you know, with rimfire silhouette, you, you shoot metallic targets off stands and um, your distances you shoot, like you start at 40 metres, you've got four ranges and you've got... You've got four different animals. You've got chickens at, at 40, you've got pigs at 60, you've got turkeys at 78 metres and, and rams at 100. Right. Which is a so long that, shot that, for that's a 22. The, that's the basic distance as to which you can pretty much get as close as you can to that particular animal. Is um, that the, the idea behind that? or No, it's pretty much the, 
the, the maximum range you'll get with a 22 rimfire rifle. I mean, a 100 metre shot for 22 rimfire is, is a long shot. Right. And when you're trying to hit a target that's sort of uh, within a two or three minutes of angle, your accuracy has got to be got to be pretty good. Mm. And uh, so that's that's shooting rifles. Yeah. Uh, what sort of for the listeners and, and for me as well? I, I don't have a clue. How long are we talk? How long is the weapon itself? Like we uh, well, they can vary in length. I mean, yep. you. you your barrel length can change, but a rifle's sort of, you know, anything from 18 inches up to probably I talk inches because, you know, I mean, firearms are pretty much measured in inches. As mm. 18 American inches is a number inches. you're familiar with, isn't it, Bruce? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 While we're on the it's, topic of pieces. It's, so. much, <laughs> it's, it's more the door, the, the, the bore diameter that yeah. probably, probably phase him a bit. But, I mean, yeah, centre fire is a different, different story. I mean, rim fire is a... If no one is familiar with those terminologies, I mean, rimfire... The, the Absolutely the, the not. Ca- the, cartridge, <laughs> the cartridge is detonated with the, the, the rim of the cartridge is the detonator. And they, oh, go, okay. they go right back to, like, the 1880s, right. pin, pin fire and stuff. Then they, okay. then they, then they fortunately, then they got onto centre fire, which, where the, the firing pin strikes the, ah, the, the primer. Comes from in the, the inside in the of the bullet. Well, it, no, it's all external, but the, the, the primer that ignites the powder in the case is, on the, is in the centre of the head of the bullet. It's so fucking technical that, like, I was reading today, like, uh, a couple of articles about um, this smart gun technology that they're trying to introduce, where it's sort of like a... They use the analogy of a key in a lock, so it's like if you have some sort of token on you, the gun will only work if in vicinity of that token and it somehow registers. But there's, like, it's so esoteric and so technical that mm. to, to come in it come into it as a layperson and try and understand some of this terminology and it, it's so in-depth, isn't it? Yeah, it's I mean, like, I, I had guys that... Like, you've dedicated, like, mm. you know, 30 years plus, like, to this, uh, to this and I'm sure there's people that would be even more along that level of just crazy sort of into the technology behind it. Yeah, well, I, I, I can go way back to when Metal Storm started because Metal Storm started in Brisbane. It started at Evan, Evan Hill. The, uh, Evan Hill. What is Metal Storm? Metal Storm is uh, they have bullets stacked in a barrel and they can fire them com- com- with a computer and they can fire them at a very fast rate. Right. Um, it was a technology that was developed in Australia and and you can shoot them from pistol to, you know, uh, pod-mounted guns on ships for shooting down missiles. They just, instead of throwing a stream of bullets, they just throw basically a, a cloud of bullets out. Mm. And they, they can fire at a very fast rate. Right. But I mean, and, and, geez, and geez, is there some, some investment in, you know, uh, machinery that can kill a lot of people quick, you know? Yeah. I mean, Isn't that just, crazy? Just, just globally. Isn't that crazy? It, it, I think the, the US's, you know, number one export or, or number one sort of, I guess, you know, contributed towards their GDP is their, you know, is is guns and, and machinery and manufacturing. You know, for that very reason. Yeah. So. Well, just just get back to what uh, Daniel said. I mean, when they bought that those pistols out, they they were very quick firing. I mean, you you know, you can fire something like thirty odd thousand rounds a minute, sort of thing. But you might only have you might only have twenty thirty rounds in the barrel. But they just throw them out so quick you can't count them. But mm. they used to have a chip on the hand. They were at that stage work, working uh, like for for pistol security that. You, know, you had a chip embedded in your hand, yeah. and, and then it, 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 if, if the pistol ever got taken off you, no one could use it because it could only be fired by you because the yeah. chip in your hand was was synced up to your pistol. So you know, yeah. if someone took it off you, uh, well, they couldn't use it because they need the chip that's in your hand. To yeah, Jeez, that, that sounds well, like well, a yeah. There's there's like you know even um, even uh, like I, I guess it would be biomedical or, or biological sort of like. Once you in, once you start inputting things into the human body to make that the the key to register, okay, this is the correct user for this weapon. Yeah. that's um that's an advanced technology when you think well, about. Oh, it's a pretty safe technology. I mean, I mean, someone, yeah. someone someone steals your pistol, it's useless. Yeah. To, it's useless to them until mm. until they have the chip. Yeah, oh, and and, and, and they because the article that I was reading was saying um there's there's a large and there's a large number of um homicides from gun grabs in uh, mm. in police arrests and stuff like that in, yeah. in the States. Mm. Lots of people will just just reach over and grab the pistol. And but it, yeah, it's 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 a, like it's a deep issue that we could like we could open a can of worms about, you know, is it is it um you know the the guns that are are the issue or is it the the gun violence that's mm. the issue and Yeah, I mean I mean those those sort of pistols it, it only pertains to pistols that are, that are electrically fired. They're fired with a with a a detonator that's that is fired by a computer. 
It's not a manual. It's not a manual. So you could essentially like be sitting in, um, you know, the Julia Street Studios and fire something in a completely different country at at, at a target, or oh no, it's, it's more the fact that the the primers that set the charge is off our computer control, so they're electronically controlled. They're not they're not fired by a mechanical firing pin. Doesn't require an actual user at, uh, at the at the trigger sort it, of thing. It's, it's just a technology. I mean, there's very few guns that are that are fired by computer. Right. But these okay. guns were. Okay. And so therefore, you could employ that technology to control their use. But right. I mean. 99.99% of firearms are, um, are mechanically detonated on the, on the, on the primer, so you, you can't really do much about that. But, but pistols in the future, I mean, if, if the primers are electronically detonated by computer, well, these guns had to be fired by computer because the, the, the firing rate was so high that you, you needed that technology to be able to detonate at those, at those sort of speeds. Mm. Yeah. And, and go, going back to, like, the, the, the hunting side of things, I suppose. So, you know, when you when you go hunting, typically are you just going for, for sport? Is it more for sort of pest management? Is it sort of more directed towards, you know, something to eat? You know, like, give it, give our listeners pretty much a run-through on, on sort of the reasons why, you uh, know, that, that you hunt. Look, it, it's, you know, I think for a thousand years we've been hunters and, mm. and we, we all have that gene still pretty heavily embedded in it. and I've, I've taken people out shooting with me that probably you know haven't done too much of that but I mean it's, it, it never it never surprises me that they 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 they're up to they're up to it because I mean it's, it's in your DNA to, to Absolutely hunt. yeah um what you hunt uh, it, 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 mainly I, I go hunting because uh you know I, I only ever um you know hunt um, feral animals because I right, think yeah. I think feral animals in this country have um, so what are some feral animals in this country? Oh, Do you know? I we, didn't we, know that we, we've got heaps of them. <laughs> deer. We've got deer, deer, deer is, deer is feral. classified as a, as, yeah. as a feral animal. Yeah, yeah. I think they're protected in like in Victoria some, in, and in New South states. Wales, but nowhere else or something. Yeah, you can shoot deer all around in Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, there's, and there's a lot of deer in Queensland. Really? Yeah, Where and, and oh, Brisbane Valley down through the, the, the you know down through Stanthorpe down through that no that yeah, sort of country. Yeah, right. I've never shot deer. I don't. I don't particularly want to. Have you ever seen deer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, right. Actually, not too many. I mean, I've mean, I have I've seen one deer and a property shot in the, with, that we shoot on and, and uh, it was an albino deer and I can remember sitting there and watching it. Right. I mean, I, I never wanted... I, I could have taken a shot at it, but yeah. I mean, I, I, and, I, just, I just didn't want to, so I didn't. And, and when, when you say you, you, you wouldn't want to hunt deer, give, give us... like Explain that probably uh, a little bit more. Yeah, I mean... I mean, horses are feral to this country, mm-hmm. um, and there's heaps of wild horses and donkeys and and camels. I mean, this country is just awash with animals. That so are much fucking oh, land I mean, mass out mm-hmm. there. When you go out there, I mean, there's no development, right? The, the centre of Australia is just just, just chock a block with, so with, with, yeah. with uh, wild wild west. Well, yeah, yeah, and you know, like look, the, the main animals I concern myself with. Are, I mean, you know, you talk about feral animals, you can start with rabbits. I mean, there's there's just just, just millions of rabbits in this yep. country. Yeah, illegal um, in Queensland. To own a rabbit, to yes. own yeah. a rabbit, to not, own not, a not rabbit. to shoot one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, you start with rabbits, and you go to fo- you know, one of the predators of rabbits is foxes. So yeah. whether, whether there's rabbits, there's foxes, or wherever there's sheep, um, because sheep, you know, one of their, you know, one of their uh, meal sources is is, is lambs. You, right. you don't, you foxes, don't, you, you mean? Yeah, you don't. Yeah. It, it's, it's 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 sort of you don't find too many foxes on say cattle properties. Though having said that, the last time we were out, we, we shot seven foxes on a cattle property. So yeah, I mean, okay. um, foxes are feral. Cats, cats, yeah. cats are a big problem in this country. And and, and mean, I, I I get fairly excited about shooting a cat. And mm. I should, shouldn't really brag about that, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we're, and we're not talking about domestic cats here. No, we're talking no. about wild. Diff- different animals, R- rural cats that are oh, yeah. that are probably at least twice the size of a regular cat. Oh, I mean they're the size of foxes now. I mean I, I, I shot a couple of cats the last time I was out. I mean you, you you pick them up by the tail and you're just surprised at the weight of them. You mm. mean? And, and, yeah. and they're they're muscly and they're you know they're twice the size of a, of a domestic cat and they're they're a pretty efficient killing machine. Yeah. You know, they and so, like, is it? It's not people's properties, or how does it work? Like, you you just go out as far as you can possibly go, because because I know <laughs> in some parts of the country there's um, you can hunt in national parks and stuff like that. But is it mostly what sort of areas do you have to go to? It, it, it's difficult to get a property to shoot on. This is just probably the, the, the most difficult part, or to get a, a good a good property to shoot on, because right. I mean, it, it depends on the you know the ecology of the and the environment, the place you shoot at. I mean, different animals like to hang around in. You know, I mean, you, 
you don't go out and do an area where there's no water or there's no yeah. cover. I mean, pigs. I mean, I've been shooting pigs for 25, 30 years, and you sort of get to ha- you get to know what they like and where they like. What yeah, sort of, what, you think what, like a pig. What, what, yeah, you, you, you do. <laughs> I mean, you, you're yeah. looking at pig shit, and you're saying, well, you know, you, you, you become a real sort of a aficionado yeah, of, yeah. Of, of, of pig shit and what they're eating and where they're eating it and, and you know, pigs need water. Yeah. So, you, you know, I mean, not, not much sense going to a property that hasn't got much water on because there's not going to be any pigs mm. there. So, mm. or, you know, pigs like cover. They, they mainly eat at night. You don't see them out too much in the daytime. So, therefore, you, 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 you tailor your habits. Yeah. You get to know what your, your quarry is and you, you and when you've been doing it for 25 years, as, as my mate and I have done, and I've guy I shoot with, I've been shooting with him for 25, 30 years. Right. And, yeah, you get pretty good at it. I mean, we, we, we're probably the oldest pig shooters in the West because, I mean, he, he's 60, 66, 67 and I'm 63 or whatever it is. So, But we always do all right because, uh, yeah, we, we know what, we know our game. Yeah. And we, we're pretty much on top of it. And so, so when you go out, how, how many nights at a time are we talking here? What's a usual uh, well, trip? Well, I mean, it's, it's sort of... It, it, night time is, you know... We've sort of evolved. Does it generally hunt at night? Oh, no, no, mate. Well, pigs, we, we sort of utilise our time fairly efficiently. Right. I mean, yeah, we, uh, you, you, you know, spotlight at night time, we, we do a bit of both. I mean, cool. we, we go out for a week and we, we hit it pretty hard for a week. So, I mean, but, but we use our time efficiently. I mean, there's, there's not much point going out in the middle of the day because it's hot. Mm. All mo- the animals mo- know animals that too. Like yeah, the animals like fuck this. Yeah, they're laid up under a tree somewhere. They're not. They're not wandering around. You know. Yeah. So, you know, a typical day if you go out pig shooting. I mean, you you sort of up at about before daylight because pigs like to move around and eat when it's cool in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Most when the, when the ground, are, most animals in yeah, general. Yeah. yeah. When the, when the ground's a bit damp and they can see, pigs haven't got great eyesight. Um, they haven't got great hearing. Good good sense of smell. Mm. They can find truffles a fair way in the ground. They got a good sense of smell. Um, really smart animal pigs. I mean, I got a lot of time for pigs. I mean, they, yeah. they're sort of they're they're a Apart from they're quite to quite, <laughs> quite an adversary. I mean, <laughs> a worthy I, I've adversary. Met a, I've met a few over the years, but <laughs> more the two two legged variety rather than four with curly I'll, tail. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I was going to say I got a few mates that have got a bit of an affiliation with pigs too. <laughs> yeah, but you can't shoot them. Yeah. Oh, not, 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 not not legally anyway. <laughs> Oh, it's a so good thing there's not a single female yeah. that listens yeah. to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. oh, that's it. Well, you can put one into it, it may, may not yeah. be a bit of lead. But so anyway. when, when, you, when you go out on these... Might not be going quite so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Very but, good. Yeah, so, so typical day, I mean, getting back to that, I mean, yeah, we sort of set the alarm clock at, say, 4 o'clock and then you're out west, it's, it's, it's just pretty hot normally. But we, we normally go out in the cool of times too, like, you know, you know, we sort of normally go out coming into winter and coming out of summer because, oh, I mean, days out there in summer, middle of summer, it, oh, can, be 40s. 40, it can be 40 degrees and yeah. 35 in yeah. the shade at night time. And so what, what are you, what where are you camping? We, where are we talking, mate? Sorry sorry to interrupt sorry. you there, Danny, uh, but where, where are we talking? Like, give us some well, area well, 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 hunters never tell you where the Secret spot, son. Yeah, yeah, that, somebody that, who's it, been a surfer, it, I thought it, you would know yeah, that. Or, or a fisherman. Oh, I mean, you, you never you never yeah, give away your classic exactly. spot. Spot X. I can tell you. Plenty of spot X. It's 650K from my door, I can tell you that. Gotcha. Um, where, where are you That's living? Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not far from you guys. But, but so you, you sort of, yeah, you, you, it's, it's a good property we shoot at and so we protect it. We don't... Yeah, understand. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We'll tell people we went, you know, we give them a rough area but you never give them a property yeah. name. Sure. They're yeah. always and so, names. And so, but is it just over time and word of mouth? Because we're talking like pre, pre-internet or Google Maps or any... Do you use any of that sort of stuff to, uh, to look at spots now or like uh, it, was it just, you know, through hanging around in those circles that people would say, hey, you should go out to this spot? Well, or? It, it's mainly word of mouth and... and, yeah. and um, yeah, property owners are reluctant to let anybody on to shoot because you, d- you don't know what you're going to get. And when we say property owners, we're talking a, a big fucking property, aren't we? Like um, hundreds and hundreds well, see, of ac- acres or... Actually... Thousands it, of hectares, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, the, prop- the, property we, the property we go to is like 80,000 uh, 80, hectares of mm. which is there we any, would... Is there any land in Australia that somebody doesn't own? Like other than national parks that are like, you know, state-owned yeah. or whatever? Uh, a, no, lot of, every, a lot of it's under lease. I yeah. mean, a lot of it's not freehold. I mm. mean, a lot of it's leased out. I mean, you crazy. Take it. Somebody's yeah. just hoarding thousands Maybe. of hectares like, this is mine. On, on a, on a Draw f- a line around it, this is on mine. A, on a footnote, but I don't know if you've seen, if you've, Google, if you've Googled the amount of Australian land that is under Chinese ownership, 
these days and it's reflected as, you know, red shading on a map. Google that shit. It's absolutely <laughs> fucking yeah. mind-blowing how well, much well, of, this, of this country is owned by the Chinese already. Yeah. A lot of it's gone back to, to Aboriginal title. So, I mean, you, you take Cape York. I mean, I went mm. up... Uh, mate, David, That's a, David I was I only I having a conversation about yeah. that last night. That's an interesting yeah. area. Oh, it's, I, 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 we went up there on a trip, David and I, uh, you know, a mate of mine, years ago. Or, you know, maybe eight or ten years ago. And, in, you know, Cape Hunting York... Hunting trip. Yeah. Yep. And, and Cape York is just... Man, you, <laughs> it's just miles of... You know, I mean, we, we went to a yeah. property up there and, and a lot of it's gone back to native title. So Cape, Cape, York. Cape York is... The, the most th- northern tip of Queensland. The most northern yeah. tip. And then what's the what's the dip down bit? The Gulf of Carpentaria. The Gulf of Carpentaria. Yeah. Yeah. That area is just like uncharted, isn't oh, it? I mean, we, we You've got to take all sorts of backup fuel and yeah, all kinds of shit, don't you? All that sort of shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you, you really get a feeling of remoteness. I mean, you know, we went to this yeah. property you know, called Yarradon and it's sort of just south of Cohen. I mean, 600, 600k of dirt road to get there, and and it's it's remote, and yeah. and you take your fuel with you because the, the property owners won't sell you fuel because yeah. they've got to get it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we took heaps of fuel with us, and and we, we get to the property, and the guy who owns the property said, well, you go through the, the holding yard, and you go out there, and you go through a few gates, and you just keep driving out there, and you'll come to a creek out there, blah blah blah. And when we got there, <laughs> we, we were 60k from the homestead, and there was there wasn't a soul between us. And yeah. where we were, and I and I, I said to my mate, it's not a good time to, you know, hurt yourself with an axe or exactly. you know, like, or, or, or wound yeah. yourself. We when we we sixty k from nowhere. It took us all day to get there because I mean it's dirt road and you get involved yeah. in creek beds and yeah. it's sort of like it's not a, it's not a bitumen road. So right to go sixty k up there is like it can take you it can take you six or eight hours. Absolutely, it's pretty, and pretty and rough. When, and when you're talking about firearms as a tool. That's the sort of trip that you want a fucking firearm on. That's the sort of trip that you need that oh, tool. Definitely, and, yeah. and 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 also the fact. I mean, uh, the guy I shoot with, we've shot together for years, and we're range officers at the Belmont Range, so we we you know, we're fairly familiar with safety with firearms, and 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 because we've been shooting together for many years, um, you sort of develop a rapport as to you know. Firearms should always be treated as a loaded weapon. You you just don't go pointing firearms around. Exactly. And, mm. Like, hey, fuckhead, look at this. Well, I mean, that, that, that's why. You know, I mean, and you've got to be responsible. I mean, you know, yeah. people don't want to. People won't let people onto their property that they don't uh, trust. Trust. Yeah. yeah. Because they got livestock everywhere. I mean, they got their own animals there. Yeah. They live there. They don't want bullets whistling through their house at night time. <laughs> yeah. you know. I mean, you you got to be responsible. My bad. <laughs> and it, and, and, it, and, it, <laughs> and it's, I mean, I, I mean, having said that, I've, I've gone very close to shooting a cocky's dog one night. Oh, but I mean, mate, we'll we, we, but, but touch but, on but, that but, one later. But it gets back to just clearly identifying what you're shooting at. I mean, if you're at night time and there's a set of eyes in, the, in, you know, in some bush and you're getting a reflection in your, in your spotlight, um, do you take the shot? Mm-hmm. Well, you're tempted to. And and I was tempted to do that night, and I had my finger on the trigger, and all of a sudden this buddy bought a collie, walked out from behind the tree. I was like, "Hey, you don't you don't you don't realise how close you went." <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's always good to have someone there that's spotlighting for you, because I mean, when you're on the trigger, it's sort of like you, you, your adrenaline's pumping a bit, and the guy who's holding the spotlight going, "Well, no, don't shoot at that until you clearly identify what it is." I mean, mm. I was ready to go, and I was prepared to go, and I, I'm, I'm sort of mm. pretty glad I listened to him because, yeah. I mean. Cow, cow cockies like their dogs, and, mm. and, and I mean, you should have had it locked up. What's I mean, a cow cocky? Sh- property owners out Pro- there. Property owners, yeah. they always, <laughs> always call them cockies. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. actually, I thought about this today, and I thought, this is a question someone's going to ask. <laughs> and, I, and, and I thought, I should Google this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I've been calling them cockies for 25 years. I mean, right. I don't, I don't right. know whether it's because they make too much noise or, you know, but they're. Yeah, the person who owns the property is always the cop. Oh, okay. Yeah, and okay. and when, when when you go hunting, I suppose, you know, like there's always the, I suppose, you know, I, I don't know if uh, if beers are involved. Maybe you can probably... Yeah, do you uh, take, oh, do you yeah, take a bit of booze, yeah, if a couple ta- of nips of scotch or something like that? No, I always take a few cartons of beer and a bottle of rum. Or and so you take Esky with... Oh, you got like one of those uh, generator fridges uh, or something? Or? Well, the property go just got fridges on it, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, it's another reason what, what are you ca- What are you camping in or you're not camping? Oh, I mean... Where, where we go primarily, I mean, there's a house. I mean, look, oh, you there's, stay there's in not, a guest there's, house. There's not a property anywhere that hasn't got a shearing quarter somewhere or, mm-hmm. or, or a few spare houses on the place. I mean, the place we go to, I mean, it, it, it's taken over two or three properties from around the place. I mean, there's derelict houses all mm-hmm. over the place. Some right. have got, some have got power on, some haven't got power on. But okay, it's good to have power on because you can just throw the so beer, you, you throw the beer in a fridge and put the switch on. And yeah, where you go. Mm. and you pay the owners a fee, and then you can just sort uh, of normally a bottle of rum and and uh, truly. See, well, see, mm. it, it's a funny thing. It's not a funny thing. You got to have a relationship, sort of thing. Well, I mean, 
I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a bit of a symbiosis thing there because, I mean, right. by law, property owners are meant by law in Queensland, and I think it's the same in every state, to to keep their feral animals under control. It's, it's, it's demanding on them by the government that they control feral animals on their you property. just can't let it run rife. No, no, they, yeah. they, they can't have, you know, pigs or foxes running... Oh, okay. Running a ten thousand of them okay. on this fucking. I mean, yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So I mean, they how, they. how do how do they police such a thing though? If well, you were just to get like, if you were one of those people that just wanted to hoard thousands of hectares and you just wanted to cultivate the biggest conglomerate of pests on Australia's uh, Australia's. Uh, well, well, it's not in their interest to have feral prop, you know, feral yeah. pests on their property. I mean, if they if they've got foxes and they're breeding sheep, yeah. Well, the foxes are knocking their lambs over. So when they when it comes into to to you know when the sheep have all their you know young, mm. well they they may have fifty percent losses from foxes. I yeah, mean, it's not I just think interest. it's interesting how they can try and police something like that. Well, money can, money money polices it. I mean, mm. conkies are there to make a bit of money, and and I mean if if, if dingoes are are eating their calves and and foxes are eating their their young lambs, well, come on in, fellas. I can yeah. And it's it's an easy fix for them because you know when they get a, they get a bottle of. JB or whatever they want, it's always their their call. Yeah, and and that costs them nothing. I mean, it costs us a lot of money to go there. I mean, I mean, a trip out west. You know, if you're driving 650k there and back, just your fuel mm. and your food and and your ammunition and and your condoms and your, and your, and your oh. well, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't use them on sheep. They don't mind. <laughs> So when you when you say before you you go, you go out for a week at a you time. If you're from New Zealand, <laughs> <laughs> if you're tar- like targeting going out pig shooting, yeah, how many can you get in a day? Is it the go- oh, is the know, goal one a day, or oh, we might try oh, and bag three today if we can? Or? It, it just depends on the conditions at the time and, and, and what's out there. Yeah. I mean, um, like as I was saying before, you you, you sort of day you, once you've been doing it for a while, you you, you form the and, right the right yeah. habits. You know what you're doing. A knack for Pe- it. People haven't haven't done it before would be useless because mm. it t- t- takes a long time to learn what you're doing. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was getting back to this before we started on this before and I haven't finished it, but um, you know, a typical day if you're pig shooting is sort of like early start. We used to walk. That's good for your fitness, but it, mm. pigs can run a lot faster than you can, and you can do a lot of walking in a day and not see too many pigs. And we did it for years, but you learn a lot by doing that you're, because you're walking on the ground, you're covering the ground, you're looking at signs, you're looking at trotters, you're looking at Wallow, pig your, shit. Pig shit. <laughs> what are they eating? Pig weed. Yeah, okay. Where's the pig weed? You know, Ta- so tastes a bit nutty today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we we never get to the point where well, you're looking for steamy ones because you know they're yeah, pretty fresh. Fresh. Yeah, but pig, yeah, pig you know, shit's very you very know very fibrous. They they have a very high fibre diet. I mean, gosh almighty. I mean, pig shit's just like a you know when it washes out. It's like those husks you use to wash it back in the back of the. You know, <laughs> in, in, in the shower, they, they, they go very high, very high fibre diet, and peas can eat anything. I mean, they're, they're, I, I'm, a, I'm amazed how, how resilient and how strong and how hardy pigs are. Which they, is what makes them a pest, really. Exactly, in, in and the they, first breed, place, they breed yeah. very quickly. I mean, a sow can have two litters of, say, ten or twelve, and maybe get five up. You know, so, so she can breed ten a year. Yeah, unlike unlike foxes, or you know, you may have. Smaller litters, but say goats, for instance, another feral. Mm. I mean, they may only have one, possibly twins, but more likely one a year. You know, right. so, okay. so pigs can breed up very, very quickly in yeah. good times. But getting back to, you know, I still haven't finished this. <laughs> uh, mate, that's all right. That's all how we roll, well. Keithy. But, but, yeah. If you start a day, I mean, your typical day, and I'll run you through a typical day of pig shooting, is you get up early. We now ride quads because we're a bit old. And you can, the thing with pigs is you're on big probies, you're covering big areas. Pigs could be anywhere. On quads, you can cover distance quickly. Mm. Um, so, therefore, you can cover a lot of ground. So, therefore, your chance of finding pigs is a lot better. If you know where to look for them, yeah. that even cuts, less, it, cuts less it down a bit. Less covert, though, I would imagine, than, than on foot. Oh, most certainly. But yeah. but but that's 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 the other side of it. I mean, you know, if you do get on a pigs on quads, it's, it's, a, bit, it's, 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 a, it's a bit like Helder Skelter. <laughs> yeah, shooting shit, up yeah. into the air and shit. Like. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fucking. Uh, you get another guy on a quad with you, so yeah. you're, you're, a bit, you're a bit careful about where you're shooting. <laughs> Cavaliers. You, you always, you always look at yeah. what you're shooting at. Uh, mm. You've got so, like a speaker on the back of the quad yeah. bike? Like, oh, no, <laughs> we, we got we got two of in the yeah. USA. <laughs> so yeah, I do a bit of singing when I'm out there sometimes. So you're up, things are a bit quiet. You're up, you're up early. You're out on the out on the quad bike. Yeah, you just so sort you of roam around. So, or? so you'll, you'll you'll get up early in the morning and say, okay, well let's let's go down to to Dodds or down to you know. 
Dysdale Ponds and we come left and mate, we come you, along. You're giving away your spots, spots here, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, gener- oh, they're generic. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> that really holds up. Like, oh, well, I may not be telling the truth. Just drives. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe just throwing some fucking yeah. leads out there for, you, yeah. for y'all to follow. Yeah, so 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 yeah, you you, you get out and you say well, this is where we're going to go, and you do it in the cool hours in the morning. So you may maybe from say first light till say maybe nine half past mm. nine. By that stage, it's starting to get a bit hot. But you've been out in quads for three or four hours at that stage, and you may have driven 50, 60 k. Right. So just so. Ro- roaming around looking for for pigs foraging. Yeah. Well, and things well, like you, that. You, you know where you're going to look. You don't yep. you don't go looking down a flat plane somewhere because yep. it's not going to be out there. Yeah. So you, yeah. you, you you pick. The areas you know where pigs might be, and if there's water around, pigs normally don't go too far away from water. They normally go downwind of the water, mm. and they normally camp up there. You know, and but in the mornings they're out rooting around, digging up shit out of the ground because pigs can they can eat a variety of food, but they they don't mind digging up you know, nut mm. grass and shit, and they get out. Mm. And they, they, mm. do, they do make a mess. I mean, yeah. they, they, I mean it's like a, you can you can find areas that you, you'd swear a D nine with a ripper on it gone yeah. through the place. And you, yeah. When you're which, is pre- a bu- which is a bulldozer for anybody that doesn't know what a yeah. D9 is. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd clear that one up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was <laughs> it, huh? <laughs> Thanks, man. I didn't, know, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the signs you're looking for when you're out bringing pig is, is digged up ground. Oh, well, dug up ground. I mean, how's that? Digged up ground. Yeah. But dug up mm. ground is, is, is a telltale. So how, how fresh it is, um, you know, those sort of things. And and you're always on the look for, for, for movement. Because movement gives things away. I mean, you can, you, can, you can walk past things in the bush that don't move and you won't see them. So, yeah. so you mentioned... Yeah. I, I mean, like walked, dinosaurs I, and oh, shit oh, in Jurassic I mean, Park. It's like, don't yeah, move. You don't move. <laughs> you could, I, mean, I mean, I used to walk years ago. You'd, you'd walk through and there'd be a, you know, a, a doe there with, a, with one in a pouch and one long side her and you know, yeah. she doesn't want to run. So she'll just stand there. Yeah. And you can walk right past her. And she, you know, within, She's like, within say, 10 or 15 metres... fucking move. And she will just... She will just her head will follow you, and she may flick an ear occasionally. Yeah. But even an ear can give you, you know, a silhouette. So, yeah. so you're making, uh, is it, t- how are you typically making your shots? Are you making shots after a moving animal? Is it a moving target, no, or is d- it typically d- a stationary target? No, it d- depends. I mean, if you're on quads, most of them are moving. Yeah. Because, I mean, your noise, yeah. you know, I mean, you're not yeah. quiet. It's, it's not a clandestine yeah. I've just, I've got operation. the most <laughs> fucking hilarious picture in my head Bruce right now of, of Keith and his mate coming down the hill on two quad bikes. Every animal just going, holy fuck, and just running into no, the well, garden. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit. Just fucking firing off shots. It's a bit, it's on a bit quads. like that. Yeah. Wearing bandanas like... <laughs> <laughs> no surprises, you won't be taking Danny hunting anytime soon. No, but it's a bit, it's I'm, a bit I'm getting keen as this conversation <laughs> progresses, I tell you what. It's a bit like that because, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you, otherwise you, 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 want to, you want them to move because as soon as they move, they give themselves away. I mean, but, but pigs are smart. They'll lay doggo in the grass and they'll let you ride past them. They, they, they're not stupid. I mean, it's, it's surprised, it never surprised, it ceases, ceases to amaze me. Yeah. I mean, you'll pull up at a spot to have a, you know, we used to always carry, you know, some drink or some food in the in the back of the quad. So after a while, you might pull up. After an hour or two, you might pull up for a bit of a breather and a food, and and you'll be sitting there having a chat, and then you'll go for a walk. And next minute, a bloody pig will leap up in front of you. He's been there for twenty minutes while you've, <laughs> you know, within within ten meters of you. Yeah. And he's been laying there, not moving, and he's just thinking, well, these guys will go pretty shortly. I mean, I don't know how many pigs we've ridden past and they've done the same mm. thing. But they lay doggo on you. I mean, I've I've come up with pigs from behind. Doggo. Yeah, they just lay on the ground. They'll, they'll get under cover and they'll just. Go to ground. I just so they just burrow into a bit of grass no, and they no, just chill just, out or something. No, they just they just 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 go down their bellies and just right. just stay mm. still. Little pigs so, will do that so too. What, I mean, what are you, what are you what are you what are you shooting for? Is it is it head shots? Is it heart shots? What what do you what are you, what's oh, a perfect just, shot you, if you're going to make it? Does it depend on the animal as well? Oh, look, if you if you're walking and you and and, and something stationary, um, yeah, and you've got the time, yeah, you'll place your shot. I mean, I mean, hunters, ethical hunters, should always place their shot. I mean, yeah. you're not out to wound an animal or, or, yeah. or make them uh, you know, suffer pain. I mean, you're there to put them out of their uh, out as quickly as you can. Yeah. So. So if you're walking and there's a big stationary, yeah, well you'll you'll take your time, place your shot, and make it quick and clean, and that's that's the way it should be. Yeah. Um, if you're chasing pigs on quads, I mean, it's it's sort of it's held not always it's, it's, it's always held a skelter. I mean, they're yeah. always on the run. So so what you normally do, what you normally do on quads, the advantage you have on quads is that you can go faster than, and, and longer than he can. So, mm. so so you use the uh, the cha- chases. You chase them. Now you, yeah. you might you might come across you know there's a sort of written unreal that, or written rule that we have. Might not when have did you anyway. start riding quads just to, to develop oh. for a second? Because I've, I've ridden them a couple of times and I find them fucking hard. 
I feel like, 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 bit like riding a horse. You've got to balance on them. Oh, there's, oh, there's yeah. a lot to it. You've you got to be careful. You can flip oh, quads real easy. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Victoria has a huge issue of, uh, oh, yeah. of, of farmers rolling quads yeah. and, and fatalities yeah. and stuff wow. like that. Yeah, yeah you've you got to be a bit careful. If you're on flat stuff, it's not too bad. I mean, you just got to be careful on the inclines that you just mm. go up. You, you can go up a bloody cliff and down a cliff as long as you go up and down straight. You come right. down sideways, you're in, in, you're in a bit of trouble. Top, yeah. Yeah, like just roll sideways on you. But... Yeah, look, mate and I, we rode motocross bikes for years when we were kids and the you know, guy I go with, was, you know, he's an, he, he was a sponsored Australian rider. Okay. So he, he's a okay. good rider yeah. and, and we, we, we know our machines and we yeah. know our limitations. I mean, yeah. but when you start chasing pigs, it, your adrenaline gets punching and mm. you, you, you sometimes can exceed so <laughs> exceed that, those limits. It's, it sounds like obviously you're, you're predominantly hunting for, for pest management. You're, n- you're not um, so much hunting for food I guess in the in the properties that you're going to, would that be an accurate statement? Or I, I mean, I wouldn't eat pigs if I should. I mean, I, I just see how how you know, I mean, they can be riddled with like TB bush, bush and oh, yeah. Thing, yeah. I mean, what do you what do you do with them? I mean, they eat dead. I mean, I mean, pigs just when you see what they eat, I mean, <laughs> you'd be a bit reluctant to eat them yourselves. Yeah. I mean, pig, pigs are like I say, they they are herbivores, they're carnivores, they they eat a lot of mm. dead dead animals. I mean, they. But they don't eat fresh meat. They eat, yeah. they, it's got to be rotten. rotten. It's got to be got to be laced with maggots before they. Right. I mean, you know, <sighs> they, they, they're, they're into the maggots because maggots is just straight protein. I mean, yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. if there's a dead animal somewhere, like a dead a, a dead beast somewhere that's just been you know hasn't been down too long, you, you'll always put it in your memory bank and say, oh, look, I've, depending on how hot it is, um, because it takes maybe two or three days to get fly fly blown in summer. In winter, it might take a week, but. Once they're fly blown, they pump up and they, you know, they're full of maggots. Well, that's and pigs have got a great sense of smell. Pigs are like they're ready. Oh um, yeah, they 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 got a great sense of smell. That's they, that, they, they can that's smell those for three or four miles. Eight hour slow cook. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's like the hungies, the hungies on, and and, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 you know that they'll, you know, any pig because being pigs, they got a great sense of smell and they can smell that stuff for, for, yeah. for absolutely miles. Yeah, and they'll just at night time. They won't do it in the daytime too often, but they'll come at night time and they'll just clean that beast up. Mm. I mean. I mean, they eat the bones, they eat everything. I mean, yeah. you know, they'll just be... You, you'll, you'll see a dead sheep there and you'll come back in three or four days and there'll just be a smudge on the ground. Yeah. Mm. A smudge on the ground, a bit, of, a, yeah. bit of, a bit of wool laying around the place and maybe the trotters. Yeah. Everything else is gone. Wow. And, yeah. then, uh, and then you come along and end his situation and then who eats him? Pigs eat pigs. Pigs no, eat oh, pigs. yeah. I mean, I mean it... it, it Nothing dies in the bush without someone getting a benefit yeah. out of it. Yeah, I mean, crows. I mean, life eats life. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just the way it is. I mean, it, I think a lot of country people don't. Oh well, country people are well aware of it, but city folk aren't. Yeah, because well, because yeah. I mean, when something dies out there, it's, it's to someone's benefit. It yeah. just doesn't lay there and rot. And that's and that's probably more closer to how life actually is. You oh, know what I mean? And it, and and it's only that we live in these sort of societies and cities and things like that that we're disconnected from what meat actually is, and we've we've been given this window where we can now be really sentimental about animals, and we've got you know like. Pet ownership, we and and all that sort of stuff. We think about meat differently. Well, but, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I go back to my because I, I came from a rural background when I was exactly, a kid. I grew yeah. up on a farm, so I mean, I'm a bit aware of this. I mean, it's it's a pretty cruel world out there. I mean, it's yeah. it's a Darwin world out there in the bush. I mean, the the the, the fit survive, the, the unfit don't last long, yeah. and they become they become the food source of those who get stronger. And and it's it's, it's, it's same as feral cats. I mean, mm. I mean, they just yeah. breed up. They the stronger ones with the stronger genes survive. They get bigger and stronger. And I mean, cats out there are the size of foxes now. I mean, they, if you're a wimp of a cat and, and 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 you know you've got a bad leg, well, you don't last long. Mm. You yeah, know, that, that's yeah, the law. Exactly. That's the law of the land. I mean, it's yeah. just it's just a Darwin theory in in, in 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 practical things. I mean, yeah. and you see it all the time in the bush. You see it all the time. It it can be, it can be a bit disconcerting at times. I mean, I've I've had to put sheep down the you know, and. and before they've died, the crows have come along and picked their eyes out. I mean, you know, I mean, hey, the crow sees it as an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna pass up an opportunity for another crow. He's if he's in there first and the, and the sheep's not dead, he'll pick his eyes out. That, yeah. that, that's that's the way it is. Yeah, and and then they're not sentimental about it either. It's no, not, not, it's not, not much, some no. sort of it's, uh, just, it's just a food per, source. Yeah, it's not some sort of perverse, deranged. No. Uh, you know, magpie coming down. It's uh, no. he's he's just looking for something to eat. He's, he's, not, he's, not he's got he's got it. he's got young to feed, and he's he's got his life to live. And and if there's a sheep there and there's a feed there, well, he'd take opportunity. Yeah, that's, and, that's the way it is. And you, you'd I guess you know you'd have encountered him before, but you know, being in the hunting game, you know, you'd you'd have you know a, a fair share of I suppose um, I guess you know like left wing sort of pacifists 
types that, you know, like, I mean, want to protect everything and, and no harm to anything type thing? What, what would be, I suppose, your, your, you know, your argument, your rebuttal against, uh, against look, I, I mean, I mean you, you, you see a lot of documentaries on TV and they, they really aren't that factual. They aren't betraying the truth as it really is out there. I mean, you know, it's nice to see a nice, furry, cuddly animal. Hey, we all like that. But, but and, and some people might take that as face value as being the truth, but it's, it's far from the truth. I mean, you know... Out in the wilds, it's it's wild. I mean, it's it's mm. a case of survival. I mean, if you're not yeah. fit enough to survive, you die. That's, that's mm. it. Yeah, that's it. And mm. and and fortunately, we're humans, and we're pretty pretty high up the food chain. So, and we're all armed. Yeah. We're all armed out there. So. That's it. And I and I think there's like <laughs> we, there's we got a better we got a better chance yeah. of surviving. Yeah. I yeah, like there, those there, odds. There's a lot of levels of that argument, and it's sort of easy to to sort of group people as you know, right and left, and all that all that sort of different stuff. But there's so many different levels of that, and I think you know there's there's the there's the pest management side to hunting there's um the self-sustaining uh you know better to sustain yourself off something that you've killed than going to the grocery store and supporting you know certain industry and then there's motherfuckers icing cecil the lion yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then there's hunting so i mean there's all these different levels of it so i think like you know it's it's easy to group people but you know for, for me like you were mentioning before chris that you know, essentially, we, we have very little knowledge and, and, and probably in if we lived in America, we might have more of, of guns and that sort of culture and stuff like that. But even for me, um, just doing a little bit of research as to as to what to question Keith about for this podcast, it's it's really uh, it, it's a it's a super divisive issue. But I think almost, you know, what you read in 2016 and 2017 is a, is a fair sort of balanced view when it comes to guns and when it comes when it comes to gun violence and when it comes to you know things that guns are useful for and i think you know if 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 it is there's there's like you're saying ethical ethical sort of ethical hunting and i think yeah i don't know i don't don't know i i I think for anybody you know that that you dead right you know it has to have context any anything any form of of hunting that you're you're probably putting through the meat grinder in terms of viability and, and in terms of efficacy it, it has to it has to add up for me and and certainly there's elements of it for me that that do, do keith you know in terms of exactly what you do in in terms of you know like the 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 pest management and and in hunt in terms of hunting to you know to to give something uh you know, to your family to eat that wasn't sort of factory farmed and all that sort of stuff. But then there's also, as I mentioned before, there's the people that are doing the trophy hunting. Is that, oh, yeah, is that and, and a lot of the time yeah. that's on like, you know, a, a game reserve where there's, you know, fences and, and, and that sort of thing. And it's like the the trophy butt thing for, for me is difficult as well. I think it's it sort of says more to the to the person's mm-hmm. ego than than necessarily the the reasons behind it. But I, I can definitely at the same time really understand what Keith's saying about there's something inherent in human beings to hunt oh, and shit and, shit. and it's Darwinism in, in, in practical theory and it's um you know there's there's something super rewarding about that and it, it, i find it fascinating like the the bush shooting and stuff like mm-hmm. that because because there you know australia exists so many different invasive species and um and you know it for for me i i, I would be interested in in the the hunt to um to sustain my own meat i, I would be interested in hunting a deer and then and then taking the meat and that sort of thing, but um, interesting to know if I'd, you could take the shot I'd, once I'd, you had it. I'd never, up, I'd never be able to kill a really, and I guess it's it's you know you, you're sort of quantifying what's a beautiful animal and what's not a beautiful animal. Is a pig more beautiful than a lion or a giraffe or something like that? But there's something about the you know bringing down an elephant or a lion or a, one of those you know big game animals that what about you, I, I could uh, never do i could yeah, never. I mean, would, I, I mean, you, I sh- would you drop one I, I struggle with that i mean I, I i i get back to what danny said i mean i i, I know guys who go shoot deer for for the for the table and, and and i've shot rabbits for the table i mean i brought rabbits home and goats rabbits are good um, i mean, wouldn't eat a pig just purely because i I'm, I'm a bit aware of the yeah. habitat they live in and what yeah, they eat, and then they can be loaded with TB. I mean, that's a big one of the big threats with with, with wild animals in this country. Is if you have, if you have a rabies or TB mm. gets uh, T- TB is tuberculosis, country. correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it gets in this country, I mean, the feral animals out there, you just you got no control over them. They'll just spread it like wildfire, and you know that that that'll kill prime industry in this country. Which is, you know, there's a lot of those issues come come to heart. I mean, trophy hunting. No, look, I, I personally personally wouldn't do that. I know people who do. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
um, they can justify it. They justify it by saying, well, and, and you can't really argue it. I mean, you know, people like to see giraffes and elephants and those majestic animals walking mm. around the bush. But unfortunately, human beings are giving them less bush to live in and it's, yeah. it's harder for them to, to, to live and... And the societies that live around them, the native societies that live around them, haven't got much in the way of infrastructure for work. And um, I, I understand, so, so they, I they, understand yeah. the argument too that even that big game hunting, um, you know, as much as those guys aren't doing that big game hunting for conservation purposes, the fees and taxes. No, no, that's and not things right. That, they are. I mean, it's well, well, like the indirect, like indirectly. In, 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 indirectly, exactly. Oh, no, no, that's pretty what I'm directly, saying. Actually, I mean, I think, I think. If you have this argument, I mean, I mean, I don't, I, I personally wouldn't do it, and 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 I just got no desire to do it. Yeah, I, I can, but but having said that, I mean, I, I can see why they do it because I mean, um, well, they do it for their own gratification. And, exactly, and that, and that's I, what I I'm getting at. That, yeah, that, that I wouldn't do it for that. Yeah, but 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 it but, does. But I could contribute do it. I, to I, contra- conservation. It yeah. does contribute to conservation. The the, ma- the major money that comes out of uh, of you know to support conservation is, is these is these people who, who run these ranches to shoot animals like that. I mean, exactly I, I don't. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's a it's a it's a hard one to get your head around because I mean, you know, I I don't support it. I don't particularly like it. But but there's nothing else there that that's doing anything to support 100%, conservation. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. How but, do you go but, around that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, there's a, a particularly all through Africa and, yeah, and main, all, mainly all, Africa, mainly Africa and yeah. things like that. You can get well, South you can, Africa. You can buy tags to to effectively give you the right to actually kill something on a property, whether that be a lion or an elephant or, or oh, something like that. And and the tag costs you a certain amount. Oh, and it's, it's fairly expensive. Because I, I mean, think that these all the. Lo- yeah. Cecil. Cecil the Lion or whatever he was he was three hundred and fifty k you know mm. so he didn't he didn't come for free but but certainly you know I'm not yeah and I, and I look at I look at Cecil I mean it's a pretty it's a pretty common story I mean I look at Cecil I mean he was he was he was he didn't have long to go exactly uh, I mean he was he wasn't your prime lion he, I mean you look at Cecil he was pretty ragged looking old lion that had been around for a long time now he was going to die and, and and you get nothing for him now you know you can con some hunter to go over there and knock him over it'd be quick and clean. Hey, you make three hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars out. That that's spent on conservation. Now it's pretty yeah. hard to argue that. Yeah, oh, that's really. a valid point. I really. hadn't really thought. I hadn't really thought well, of it well, that I way. Mean, you I go, didn't know his age. Well, I, I mean, I know guys who go to South Africa. I mean, shoot with guys. I mean, shoot with a lot of South Africans because a lot of South Africans are fairly fairly pro gun. Mm. Oh um, yeah. And uh, I mean, it need to be there. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Amen. I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, there's been a lot emigrate to this country, and 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 they do support the shooting sports very very heavily. And I and I got a lot of time for South Africans in in that regard. But. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you go to, if you got the will to, or you got the desire to do it, and I mean, I don't, and probably ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people haven't. But mm. you know, if if you want to go to, you know, South Africa and shoot an elephant, I mean, it's going to cost you a fucking monster of money. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to go and do it there for, on, on a fucking backpacker's fucking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, exactly. you just can't do it. Exactly. I mean, and and people don't don't sort of, yeah, it's a hard one. I mean, people don't sort of see that. They're, they're quite prepared. They're quite prepared not to see that, but I mean, if you if you don't want it to happen, put a bit of money into conservation. You know, you get the government to, to, to sponsor millions and million dollars. Put your own money into it. I mean, these yeah. guys who go there to shoot, they spend their money and they spend big bucks to go to. And South Africa is about the only place you can do it. Right. I mean, they breed the animals to do it. I I don't particularly subscribe to the the ethics behind it, and I don't. Really, in my guts, I, I don't particularly like it. But Sounds I mean, counterintuitive, doesn't it? It, it is. Kill, but kill I mean, something to conserve it. Yeah. Well. If it works, I mean, but come up, come up with a viable alternative. There's nothing That's else, right. yeah. And I'm, I'm a big one for that too, Keith. Like, I, I think that a lot of people, um, you know, have issues but don't have solutions, and and that seems to be you did right. The, the the problem that 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 we face a lot is that you know no one wants to, um, you know, no, everyone doesn't like the, the the problem that we've got at hand, but no one's actually got. Well, something it's, it's, that's it's also sensational sort of stuff. I mean, and, and and the press, you know, God love them. I mean. All they want to sell is news that's, you know, it's sort of sensationalist. I mean, mm. sexy. I mean, Cedric was a what was Cedric or whatever. The, what was the lion's name? Cecil. Cecil. Yeah, we're, we're so far caught him. I mean, it was a very, Cecil. it was a very yeah. emotional, yeah. it was a very emotional issue, and it got a lot of play. Yeah. I mean, the press aren't there to necessarily explore the, 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 the you know, the, the problems mm. sol- yeah. you know, to solve problems. They're there to get time, and they're there to sell papers, mm. and 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 really, I mean, I got I got a lot of beef against, um, you know, journalists, that, you know, who don't. Yeah. Take the sit the, their, their occupation a bit more seriously than they than they should. But but uh, I I totally agree with you on that point. But I always come back to the to the idea that 
media only ever give the people what they want. And it's because people eat that shit up. But I, I, I dated a girl once who, who used to say that she felt, she legitimately felt more empathy for animals than she did children. Like for, to look at like a, a baby. Sometimes. Uh, yeah. And, and you've said the same, Chris. Mm. And I think there's something, uh, and, and to put it in her words, actually, she said that um, uh, something about them being, not being able to defend themselves. Whereas like a human, you would assume has the same sort of intelligence or sentience to be able to defend itself. But that's what I, that's what I was alluding to earlier about, you know, y- your statement about how out, out in you know these rural areas, it's like that's that's life. That's da- Darwinism in ac- action. Action is it's the magpie picking the, picking the sheep's eyes out. But because we live in these cities where we're super safe and we've lived this life where we haven't experienced any death or we haven't experienced any major aggression or or anything like that in our lives, and we've lived in this sort of like different little it's a cocoon bu- we bubble. Live in. We've yeah. b- we've become really really sentimental about animals. So when we hear about a Cecil the lion story, or we he- hear about the gr- the Harambe Harambe is it or whatever yeah, the, the gorilla the, the gorilla that got shot as well. Pe- yeah. But think about that in comparison to how many fucking people get shot every day. How many people get shot by police officers or in you know home invasions or all of that illegal illegal street activity and shit like that. And it's like. People latch on to Kim Kardashian's fat ass or or fucking Cecil the Lion. Not a bad ass. (laughs) 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 Fucking (laughs) sizey. Wouldn't mind getting a cross hair on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Everyone blew up about that Harambe the Gorilla. Were you familiar with that, Keith? The Cincinnati Zoo where a a child fell over the railing into into the Gorilla. I'm with you now. There was a silverback there. Yeah. They they call me the silverback at work, actually. Do they? Ooh. (laughs) Ooh. The twister. (laughs) Apparently it's... Apparently it's the way I walk <laughs> it would, and my age. Yeah, there's a bit of a primate draw yeah. the gate there. Yeah, yeah it is. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, uh, a child Explain, fell, a child for, fell for over the railing. For anybody who doesn't know the Harambe yeah, story, it, A child fell over the railing at Cincinnati Zoo into the gorilla enclosure. Harambe comes over, grabs the child by the arm and just starts walking through his little fucking enclosure through this little creek bed that they've made for him there. Just starts dragging the kid by the, by the arm or the foot. So the the zookeepers come into the enclosure, bang bang, two, two shots t- take him out, and the the whole internet went into meltdown about how oh, all, all of a sudden everyone was a fucking gorilla expert. Like oh, he, all he was doing was <laughs> showing they, they, be, they, they become gun experts they, as well. Exactly, yeah, exactly right. So everyone on their high horse about it. I thought they did, in my own personal opinion, I thought they did exactly what was required. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't yeah. r- risk going in. You just tear this kid's head off with his bare exactly, hands if something. Yeah. If you spooked him and he freaked out, or yeah, you just yeah. couldn't, couldn't take that chance. No, I mean, the kid shouldn't be there in the first place. That's Absolutely, right. That's no, right. no one wins in that scenario. No. You know, and and, and, it, and it comes down to if if we're okay with keeping a couple of silverbacks in a zoo in Cincinnati yeah, and where people point. go and, and people go and look and pay their money and go, oh, it's Harambe. It? They give it a name and shit it like was, that. It was the... If, un- if, yeah. if we're cool with that, then we need to be cool with the fact that if that line... If a kid falls into that... If a kid falls into that gorilla mm, cage... That's it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a child or <laughs> the animal, the, the child wins every time. Yeah, exactly. Every yeah, time. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was, it was see, a no-brainer see, for well, mine. See, was that, it was out in Darwin, in Darwin Territory. I mean... The kid wouldn't survive. No, mm. that's no. It. Mm. it was. It was. Yeah, he'd be meat. Bad on the parents' behalf, and yeah. I guess that's yeah. why human beings have looked after their young. Because you think about how how quickly animals advance from the time that they're young compared to a human. A human needs to be taken care of for fucking years before oh. it's ready to roll. Elephants are a bit similar, but but they're, are they? but one with are you. They? Yeah, they take a yeah. long time. Yeah. yeah, I mean animals. I, I got a lot of time for a lot of animals, but yeah. elephants are pretty. How, pretty how many animals? Like, if if, you, if we go out for a week and say, is two days of that travel? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, a day. Uh, I think a day of that travel. How, how many animals days. are we seeing in, in I mean, the week? Do I mean, you reckon? I mean, I just look. I just like seeing, just, not even. I not just even like shooting. it down the bush. I just like it down the bush. I mean, I mean, one hundred percent. I mean, with it, you. I mean, you can ride around. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm only out there to shoot pigs mainly, or foxes, or you know, the property. And the property we go to, he's got goats. Um, yeah, you know, goats are feral, but he he harvests the goats, so we don't shoot the goats. Yeah. We don't shoot kangaroos. It's illegal. Um, it's illegal to shoot kangaroos. Well, if you haven't got tags for them. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. haven't got an uh, approval to do yeah, it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he, he's which, got which can be another problem in Australia. Well, he, he, he's got he's got resident roo shooters that come on at night time yeah. and shoot roos. Yeah. I mean, I mean, do they do it out of choppers? No, no, they do it. They do it. Oh, night, okay. night time with spotlights. Yeah. I mean, okay. they, they might come out and take. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the, he had his professional roo shooter that used to live on site, and I used to have a beer with him, have a chat to him, and and 
I mean, I, th- I think people just aren't aware of the number of kangaroos in this country. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. three million kangaroos yeah. a year exactly. shot for consumption. Oh, three million. That's incredible. Oh, so and, for, and, and they can still sustain those numbers. It's like yeah. an eighth of our population. For, for, any, mm. for all, any so, of our... So what were the, pop, what were the total population of kangaroos? Well, well there's, there's, more can, like there, there's more kangaroos in Australia 40 now. Mi- yeah. 40 mil? Yeah, but there's, there's, like more, f- there's more kangaroos in Australia now than there was in, in yeah. the start of, start, yeah. start of the colony. And because it, we, we, we've put dams and mm. water and food and stuff can there. Drive, yeah. And, and they've just gone out of control. It does. It sounds crazy, but for, for any of our international listeners... Um, that w- on completely coat of arms, you know, which is like a national sort of emblem for us. Which Emus is and a, kangaroo. A yeah. kangaroo, but we absolutely have an enormous, as Keith is, you know, alluding to, we have an absolute enormous population. I mean, of you, them you're right around the corners and there's just this kangaroos the everywhere. Top search result. The current kangaroo population estimate for the commercially harvested kangaroos released by the federal government puts the numbers at 50 to 60 million. This I mean, said 30 before just taking the piss, and it's geez. double that. No, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> I mean, this you, means that there are more, more than twice as many kangaroos in Australia as there are cattle. I don't lie to you. Wow. No. I mean, I, mean I, I go out west and I see kangaroos. I mean, I, I like kangaroos. I mean, I ride yeah. on my quad and they dump alongside me. I, I mean, they, I, I'm not out there to shoot them. And, 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 and purely because the guy who comes out at night time, that's his livelihood. Yeah, I yeah mean, exactly. I mean, it's illegal for me to do it, and I don't. I have. I have yeah, shot kangaroos, yeah. um, but but only for harvest for for skins and that years ago, and that's yep. that's hard work. Um, shooting shooting roos for, for for human consumption and skins. I mean, I've gone out with roos shoots at night, uh, roos shooters at night. I'm professional guys, and it's just a lot of hard work. And mm. can you clear something up for me that I've always wondered? If something is killed for its skin, do, is the meat utilised or thrown away? Uh, or you can shoot for for carcass. Or you can shoot for skins. If you shoot for skins, it's only the skin that's used. Right. So they skin the they skin the what they do is they they well the guy I shoot. Where do they use. shoot it? Because they would want to keep the skin nice. I mean, they? yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, professional roo shooters. I mean, they have to shoot the kangaroo in the head, and they have to have proficiency. If they go to, and they sell a skin with a bullet hole through the neck of the skin, they're in a lot of trouble. They can't sell the skin. Mm, right. So I mean, kangaroo shooters are good shots. Yeah, I mean they right. go out Incredible. at night time. They go out at night time and they shoot anywhere between forty and sixty kangaroos a night. Mm. And they might go out six nights a week. Yeah. They might go out forty-eight weeks a year. And you multiply that by the number of roos shooters in Australia, that's a lot of kangaroos. I could say three million. I yeah. think is roughly a year. Now they only shoot. They only shoot big ones. They normally shoot males, um, mainly because um, why would you shoot a female? They're, they're the ones that produce. The next mm. lot of kangaroos coming through, yeah, and it's pretty easy to pick a male roo. Um, and you know, I mean, yeah. red, red kangaroos are all male, exactly, yeah, and they're big, and they're the, big, the and, the and, the and, and, and a female. What, uh, what defines a uh, a red kangaroo? How, how do you tell? Oh, color, di- yeah. color, <laughs> color. There, yeah, in case you're wondering, <laughs> yeah. 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 the big muscly bastards yeah. look, yeah, look, look like, is, look like, yeah, look like. Yeah, they look, look like a guy on steroids, but they just, they're just red and they're big and they're boxy. So they're like the silverbacks of mm. the kangaroo yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So if you see a red roo, you know he's a male. Yeah. Um, Did you I see mean, that video that went viral, Keith, of um, the uh, kangaroo fucking with somebody's baby and then the... Uh, the dog. Uh, yeah, fucking with dog. somebody's yeah, dog and the guy runs that, up, yeah. and shapes yeah. up. Oh, right, I mean, I mean can, can, right. kangaroos, are, they're... they're uh, yeah, they're a pretty muscy animal. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. want to tangle with them without, oh, a, without a firearm. <laughs> yeah. Talk about um, roo shooters oh. being crack shots. I've oh, they s- are. I saw a video of, uh, online a while back of Chopper Reed with a rifle. Mm. He had his mate stand probably 25 metres in front of him with a stubby on his... Put a stubby oh, VB on his head and no. shot it off. Mm. If we went out to the backyard right now, I stood at 25 paces. Are you confident? Oh, look, can- can- <laughs> kangaroo shooters, I mean, they shoot from arrest. They shoot with, with very accurate rifles. I mean, they shoot out to probably oh, 150, no. 100 to 150 Qu- metres. question was, would you be confident of your ability to shoot, shoot, a, shoot, a, stubby shoot a stubby off my off head off in the backyard head. later tonight? I mean, my, my latest rival, I could, I could shoot a $2 coin off your head at 200 hey! metres. Yeah, Keithy! Hey, that's what's up. The man. <laughs> that's what's up. That's cool. <laughs> $2 we, coin. We were, only, we were only talking about before the podcast too, you know, about the – how interesting the ballistics of, of bullets' trajectory is really. That, that There's so many variances that you have to allow for in terms of drop of the bullet and, and weather and humidity and, and those snipers that, that sort of do those, those long-range sort of military stuff. They, there's a lot they have to consider. Yeah, they, 
They only show you the ones they hit. They don't show you the ones that miss. That's because, right. I mean, I mean sure, they yeah. must miss a bloody lot. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because it's, 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 they're it's, shooting from as, as, as long as a thousand yards. I oh, know. They, 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 some of the, they some of those, some of those sniper, some of those sniper shots are out to three, th- over three kilometres. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah, That's I mean wild. they're using three through eight Lapuas and fifty BMGs and stuff. I mean, but fuck three kilometres. I mean, I, I know how difficult it is to shoot something accurately at a thousand metres. I mean, there's just so many things coming to come into play. I mean, you mm. mean your, your velocity of bullets only got to change by like five feet a second, and you're you're three or four or five inches low at a hundred or at a thousand. Yards or meters or whatever. So, it is. what are the, what are the longest shots you you typically make? <laughs> oh, I just blew into the mic. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't mm. do that, should I? Um, <laughs> we're, 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 we're all doing it now. Pol- apologies yeah. to all our listeners. We're going to start a beatboxing yeah. here. Yeah. Just to be clear, he didn't actually blow into the mic. Only with my mouth. He, he exhaled. <laughs> he wrong exhaled. wrong choice of words, but he exhaled. Yeah, I mean, yeah, long shots. What's a long shot? I mean, depends on what. What caliber well, rifle yeah, you're using? If you're using, a, if you're using a 22 rimfire, I mean, 100 meters is a long shot. Um, if you're using a 308, a thousand meters is a long shot. Mm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, it never ceases to amaze me how a thousand, thousand meters. It's just crazy yeah. to think that someone lined you up through through a scope and go mm. oh, I mean, I, 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 anonymously. I, I, mm. I mean, they could do it all, all day, every day. I mean, mm. yeah. you, you take the guys that shoot palmer shoots. They shoot with open sights. They don't even shoot with telescopic sights. I mean, they'll be shooting five inch groups at a thousand yards. So something like, have know. you ever shot a f- like a like a f- like a fully automatic weapon? I'm I'm so well, ignorant I mean, to guns. I mean, I'm I mean, thinking I like a Tommy this, gun this, or this. something. <laughs> like that. Have you I ever mean, shot a gun that goes like that? I mean, <laughs> a machine gun. I, I mean, a lot of people. I don't clear this for a lot of people. I mean, you mean you get, you get the media and they're talking semi-automatic, automatic. They don't know what they're the talking. Adler. They don't know what they're talking about. Well, the Adler is is a, is a something. It's a, le- it's a lever ages. action repeater. It's let's go there. Let's go there. That's the right terminology. But I mean, I mean, let's clear up semi-automatic and. And fully automatic. A lot of people, and please, certainly journalists, please. journalists haven't got a fucking clue. Mm. Really haven't. I mean, automatic weapons in this country have always, always been illegal. You can't own a machine gun. Machine gun is you pull the trigger and it just keeps firing. Mm. Yeah. That's that's exactly. fully automatic. That's fully automatic. Have you fired something like that before? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did. I, I did when I was in cadets. I mean, I fired a Bren gun and 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 uh, an Owen gun. They were fully automatic. Um, oh, right. But but but. Has anybody but else at this table? <laughs> never. Uh, no. I've, I've it costs you a lot in <laughs> ammunition. Yeah. You never go in the same spot. <laughs> I love how you uh, had to think about it, Bruce. No, the, I've, I've shot uh, <laughs> three different firearms in uh, over in Thailand. That's the well, only, that's I, the only I, time I feel, I've ever... I feel very experienced here. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, ever, uh, the only time I've ever, ever fired them. And, um, just full, full You're of in a, the presence yeah, of greatness here. Full of, uh, adre- <laughs> yeah. I can see this. Full of uh, adrenaline and piss at the same well, well, time. Gun, <laughs> well, guns... Well, was it an adrenaline rush? Yeah, well, just gun, holding the gun well, for the it first was. time. It was. Yeah. Had a uh, yeah. pretty pretty large pistol. I was surprised at the weight in it because all you did was turn up to this place in a tin shed. Mm. The big tie guy there strapped to fucking to the nines with all sorts of shit on his belt. That's, how you, like, that's how you don't take them away. That's right? it. He goes fa- uh, f- face forward here, gives you two little cotton wool buds for your ears. And oh, he just really goes, handy. He goes... Just fucking go for it, mate. Yeah. Go for it. And shot a <laughs> shot a shotgun. Just don't shoot yourself or anybody else. No, exactly right. Yeah, don't turn around with the mm. firearm yeah. or fucking a lot of people. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people do that. That's that's something I want to ask you yeah. as well. Have you ever had any close calls where people have been out on the piss and it's like, mate, you almost shot me in the fucking head? <laughs> like, have you had any sort of close or, calls where people no, being I, negligent? I, 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 I had. To, well, I shouldn't really say this, I suppose. But yeah. <laughs> too yes, late now, mate. The yeah, yeah, well, too late now. <laughs> Allegedly, it's all good. <laughs> I mean, at, at, at Belmont. You know, going back not that long ago, I mean... At Belmont, USA, for yeah, those Belmont, uh, US, <laughs> Belmont, yeah. USA, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. No one near no, Brisbane. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that Belmont over the Gateway Bridge yeah, there. No, no. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm a range officer there, so I mean... I've, you know, Definitely I, I, not I, that one. I, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And anyway, I'm out at 500 metres and we're setting up silhouette targets. And the pistol range is supposed to be enclosed. And next minute... You know, zim, 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 thud, 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 into the ground. All, you know, <laughs> <laughs> 20, 20, 30 metres away from me and my car's parked in the front and going, and what the fuck do I do? Do I, do I hit the ground or... Duck and run, yeah, fuck. <laughs> and so, yeah, a bit disconcerting. I mean... <laughs> did you I, give someone a mouthful of Well, I, when, I, when I got back down the range, I certainly did. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there was there was three of us out there, and we were all looking at each other, going, "What the fuck do you do?" I mean, we uh, we aren't even armed; we can't even shoot back. 
I felt like a non-combatant in bloody uh, in fucking yeah. Moosel in yeah. Yeah. Moosel or yeah. something like that. Peace time. Start waving your white underpants. <laughs> just fucking <laughs> surrender. Well, they were, bit, they were a bit stained at that stage. <laughs> 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 they were no longer white. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, it's, it's funny. I mean, well, not funny, but I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been shooting firearms for years, but it was the first time I've ever had someone sort of. Not necessarily shooting at me. They weren't shooting at me. It was just ricochets coming off yeah. the pistol. Jesus. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if they hit me, it was purely accidental. But hey, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, I don't want to yeah. become a statistic. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 yeah. my, my first time paintball was a um, my first and only time, I should say, paintball. Oh, you can get up and walk away from those ones. <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah. but, it's a bit different. <laughs> but, but honestly, w- was not a, not a lethal not a lethal <laughs> weapon. Absolutely not. But was an eye opening experience just to to feel. The trajectory of something just coming at you, like, just yeah. and like, holy shit, like, I'm getting hit by these things. Oh. I had it in my mind because they always play those games where it's like capture the flag or something like that. And so, they've given me the kit and I've, I've run out onto the thing, they've given me the gun or whatever. And I've, I've seen every action movie or whatever, so I'm like, I'm just gonna run up the middle and save the fucking day. That's what I'm gonna do here. And basically, set off, and all of a sudden, I cop like five or six pa- of these paintballs, and the way that they come in, like, thing, just fucking smashing you and 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 oh, smarting. They're, 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 they're coming yeah. slow compared they to a bullet. Smart. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'll bet they you wouldn't are. even see them coming. Yeah, yeah I bet you yeah. wouldn't yeah. even see a bullet. Hey, what one thing I wanted to ask you, Keith? Um, I guess being someone that that has, I guess, possesses firearms and and has them at your residence and and things like that. Has there ever been an instance that you've thought about? Grabbing one in terms of like what, um, what, for um, self-preservation. Yeah, for self-preservation purposes. No, no. Fortunately, I haven't. Never, no, never. No, no. I mean, I mean, the way the laws at the moment. I mean, it, 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 it's physically impossible if you if you conform to the rules. Yeah, because the they they've mean, got to be locked away yeah, in cabinets yeah, the, and all the that. Bolts sort of are out shit, of them. Yeah. And the ammunition's another yeah. cover. I mean, you'd have to give a if someone right. if you had an intruder, you'd have to give him. You know, yeah. give, yeah. give me give me five minutes to get my gun <laughs> down. Yeah. Yeah. Up, yeah. Like Honey, a I can like hear a something musket. downstairs. <laughs> Oh fucking hell! Give me ten minutes. <laughs> Loading. The I mean, musket. I mean, years ago, you, it, it was it was a legitimate co- it was a legitimate a legitimate reason to own a firearm as and for self preservation. But when they changed the laws back in '96, I mean, they took that 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 rule away. You yeah, mean, it, it has it, to it, be no, for like sh- it has to be uh, for rural target, control yeah, or target shooting, so, sporting yeah. use. What are the actual requirements in Australia to own a gun? Um, to own a firearm, I mean, you have to be I think 17 and over. You can. You can shoot a firearm at, at, at as young as twelve under supervision, um, and to own a firearm, I mean, you 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 have to have a. I mean, you can't be. In, you know, you, you, you can't like be a, a you license can't be, to acquire or something, don't you? Yeah, well, you have to have a firearms license. To have a firearms license, you you really need to have a firearm. Yeah, you can't go and get a firearms. Licence without having a firearm. Oh, okay. Fucking sounds like a whole chicken and egg scenario. Uh, right there. I mean, they made it very. They made it very difficult. I mean, I mean, shooters have have, have become. I mean, guns are a very political issue, and I've been. I mean, I've been involved in this for twenty five years. I mean, yeah. and I and I know. I mean, I remember as a kid for everybody playing at home um, around the time of the Howard elections, Keith had probably like a quarter page uh, headshot in the Courier Mail. I mean, I mean, I mean, I actually, I registered a political party in Queensland that was basically a pro-gun party. Yeah. I mean, I mean, very few people. What do we have now? Very like few the people. Hunting and fishing party. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, what else is out there? There's, there's, there's nothing there's much. So, in, there's nothing much. When in you Queensland. go to the elections and there's all those different parties, there's like the marijuana party. party, the sex party, the le- lesbian, gay, and bisexual uh, I mean, party. I mean, there's a there's a few issues that are always a you know a motive issues like you know abortion and and you know, divisive. You know. Well, yeah, and firearms is certainly another one of those things. Absolutely, and, and, and it's it's totally taken out of context. I mean, I mean, no one ever looks at the facts. No one ever studies the facts. It becomes an emotional issue, and people get into arguments, and it it's becomes true. good. It get, becomes good press, but but really, people should sit back and Google Australian Bureau of Statistics, and when you look at that, we haven't got a gun problem. We never had a gun problem. We never have. It become a political issue. Mm. You look at you look at death by semi-automatic firearms before Port Arthur, two a year. Did we have a problem? No, no. we didn't have a problem. But 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 no one no 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 journo worth his salt researched it. Really, he didn't. Mm. It, it annoyed the fuck I'm out of me because, I mean, because it's it's not that fucking hard to jump on a fucking computer these days and get access to th- those sort of things. I mean, you you, I, d- I defy everybody. Get on your ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics. 
and type in death by homicide. Homicide by firearms in Australia. Mm. Mm. We haven't got a fucking issue in this yeah, country. Yeah, right on. We haven't got right a fucking on. issue in this country yeah. at all. I'm going yeah. to throw a statistic at you. Um, 253 people who died from gunshots in Australia in 2014. Okay, how, how, many, were, how many were suicide? 185. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, exactly right. You know and, and, and also homicide by firearm. Do you, how, many, how many did the police shoot? Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, that number. I mean, really, all the time. That's really, true, I, yeah. I went back the other day to look at it, just to refresh my memory. Not, not because this was coming. I was mm. going Doing to your homework, Keithy. No, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I just keep abreast of things. But I mean, you you got statistics going right back to 1915. Guns have never, ever been a problem in this country. Yeah, ever. Wow. But 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 Howard. Little Johnny Howard. I mean, yeah. he 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 needed a a, and, you know, a political for, ideology. And for what, what, what Keith it, mentioned it before, did well. well, for what Keith mentioned before about Port Arthur, for anybody that isn't familiar with that, that uh, was an instance in Australia in in nine or if, if at, I'm not at mistaken, at the time, at the time, it was the the world's largest civilian uh, firearm massacre. Wow. Mm. So in in 1996, uh, a guy called Martin Bryant took 35 people's lives at a at a cafe. In uh, in Tasmania. Tasmania, yeah, and mm. um, and yeah, exactly like Daniel said. Uh, pretty much, it re- led to gun reform in Australia, and and the, the prime minister at the time put those regulations on. So, what was it? It was like a a, a gun well, well, bo- he, a gun buyback. Well, I mean, they, they they raised money through the health system, which is ironic. Right, three hundred and fifty million. I think it was. It cost uh, the gov- it cost the government to, it cost the to government buy, a lot buy of back money. those weapons. Yeah, I mean that, that money would have saved a lot more lives built in the he- spent in the health system, mm. as far as I'm concerned. But, I mean, yeah, it, it just became a political issue, and and you got way out of tilter. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I got my own views on that, and I don't know whether I, <laughs> I want to go any further. Can of worms. <laughs> it is a can of worms. But what about what about uh, what about Donald Trump? Did you hear any of the the stuff about him saying all of the stuff about how he's looking to completely reduce all of the restrictions and and gun free zones like schools? He thinks there should be more guns in schools. No, uh, I, mean, I mean, do you I think, mean, do you mean think it, Trump will make a difference to? America's to what got, America experienced? America's got a problem. I mean, I mean, they're awash with firearms. But, but, but contrary to, 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 to what people believe, and this is what the media teach people, I mean, if you, if you really have a look at the facts, I mean, there's a lot of states in America you can't own a firearm. I mean, New York yeah, City, you right. can't own a firearm. I really? mean, everyone thinks you can go into, 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 into bloody Ma- Macy's or Walmart and buy a firearm. It's, it's not that easy. Um, but having said that, they, they have got a problem. But, but you can't really assimilate Australia to be anything like the US. I mean, I think, and you look at Canada, it lives right next door. I mean, their, their death by firearms is, is, is way less. Way less. Way less in, mm. the, in the state. And it's just a line on the map. On a, on yeah, the that's all it is. Like yeah. Landlocked. Yeah, and landlocked. And, 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 and exactly. I, think, I, think, I think death by firearms is more to do with social issues like drugs and people living in poverty, you know, like, mm. you know, trying to, you know, get their way through yeah, society. Exactly. I mean, if you looked at, if you looked at demographics that are, more closely aligned to Australia, I'd, I'd say New Zealand is probably as close demographically to us as any other country in the yeah, world. Yeah, absolutely. And and I mean they don't have the, the strict fire you know, strict firearm laws that we have, yeah. and 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 they they cope just fine. Yeah, um, yeah I mean I, I I just think yeah. I think I think I think. Ju- What's ju- up, Bristles? You got to bounce. I do. I have to fucking split for a sec. Thanks for your time, Keith. Keep, right. keep fucking rolling hard, boys. Okay. Too yeah. easy, bro. Name yeah, catch your brother. You're going to run out of tape on his reel before I finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Keith's spitting all night. We're yeah. getting we're getting settled. And, in. and my beer's empty as well. Yeah, exactly. We got plenty more in the fridge. We'll, we'll, we'll refresh that for you. I'll, uh, I'll I, go grab us one. I think, okay. I think like because um, because Germany, like uh, as a country, is if I'm not mistaken, is is one of the the highest rates of, of gun ownership pretty much anywhere in the world. But, oh but no, yeah, no, they, no, they no, don't you, have a problem with uh, with. With a, a fatality rate as a result of guns, uh, it, it, it's 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 a fairly emotional issue. This, I mean, most of Europe have fairly strict gun rules, and, and always have. I mean, mm. when when Hitler came to power, the first thing he did was make ban firearms for all civilians. I mean, um, I, I just think, and my, and my father always said to me, you know, as I was a child, and he was doing his full ball target shooting, and he was in the military during the war, and he, and you know. They paid him to fire machine guns. If you're guns. wondering what all that banging is, we're just putting fresh beers on the table, people. Yeah, it's all and, good. And it's sort of... You know, I look at my father, and my father said... Oh, and I remember as a child, 
know, when I say child, I was probably 10 and 12, I mean, you should always be careful of a country that, that tries to take firearms off you because, I mean, if they try to take firearms off you, I mean, there's, there's got to be a reason. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't see a problem with firearms in a free society. But I think there's a bit of, it, it, it gives you a bit of balance in your society. I mean, um, there's very few countries in the world that are, 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 are you know, fall under military dictatorship because there's just no, there's just no, there's got to be a balance of power. There's got to be something there to oppose military. I mean, um, I mean, certainly from a military point of view in Australia, I mean, I, I think the deterrent to, to, for anyone, you know, uh, wanting to commit sort of uh, hostile acts on Australia is not so much what, what our military is, it's more what's in the hands of private people. I mean, I think if you're going to try and control a country that's fairly yeah. well armed, um, as they, you know, I mean, it's it's been proven through history time and time again. I mean, so you, you, so you would you would support a you would support a movement towards dialing back all the the gun regulations in Australia, yeah? Oh, look, I think there's there's, there's people who shouldn't have firearms. Mm. Certainly. Um, Do you know people that have firearms that you believe shouldn't? No, not personally. No, no. the people they're, I, the they're people all pretty on the level. Yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, look, look. Primarily, people don't have the desire to go out and shoot somebody. Mm. Um, really. I yeah. mean, um, and, and that's that's reflected in in our statistics. I mean, mm. you look at the statistics. I mean, there's more people die from bee, bee sting in Australia than, than die from firearms. You know, it was another statistic I, I wrote down today was three thousand guns stolen nationwide each year. Um, stolen gun market is large. Well, I mean, as soon as you as soon as you're illegal, uh, well, as soon as you just make something illegal, whether it's drugs or booze or bloody firearms, you're going to have an industry there that's out to make money. I mean, to own, a, to own a, to to say, well, okay, look, 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 short pistol, like sh- short firearms, pistols. I mean, it's it's difficult to you can own a pistol, but I mean, you've got to go through the hoops. I mean, it's not something you just go and do. I mean, right. you, you you've got to be checked out. Same in the states. I mean, you've got to be checked out. I mean, you can have a law to carry a firearm in in America, in, in inside thirty two states in America have a carry law, and they found in all the states that had carry laws that the crime diminished. It cost them nothing because the public were aiming themselves, but I mean. You just couldn't go and you couldn't be a black drug dealer in bloody New Orleans and go and get a firearm carry license. Making I mean, it you had racial, there. <laughs> <laughs> po- po- possibly, but uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, just drawing the line that that firearms in the hands of responsible people mm. aren't a problem. Yeah, yeah. That, that's 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 probably I'm trying what I'm trying to cut to, but I mean, um, yeah, and it is such a it's such a topical issue when it when it comes to gun violence and and people using that as you know uh, an argument about. Me- mental health issues. I understand the argument that you know, if if people have better access to guns, then potentially more people with more mental health issues have access to guns and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's it's something we need to curb in human society as to why why do we want to kill each other? And I think my, my perspective on it anyway is that because we don't live in the nature of which you speak when you go out and you live off the land and you hunt and you and you tap into that primal sort of center of what it is to be a human being what it is to be that particular animal organism you become detached and we live in we live in concepts of of what real life actually is we're like oh this is my job and i and and it's all and you buy your meat from the store and stuff like that and i think people become so Sanitized. so so far so far removed from what life actually is that they feel like they just want to fucking kill somebody and they just want to oh. shoot, shoot somebody in the street or stab somebody or run them over with their car or fucking whatever it may be the the utensil for which that they do it isn't necessarily that important but it's it's the the problem inherent in that person's mental state for them to for them to act out against you know human life in yeah such yeah. a crazy way yeah it's sort of yeah you can have a different view to that too I suppose I mean in the fact that I mean what does your government guarantee you I mean does it guarantee your 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 safety I mean they say that the police are there to to, to keep you safe. Well, if someone comes through the door in a, in a, in a, in a home invasion, I mean... They're not mm, going to keep you safe. And they're not no. going to keep you safe. Well, well uh, so we're so flawed to think that we could... How we often could, does that happen? We could, often. We could yeah. elect people to decide how everybody lives. It just it doesn't work, you know. Yeah. The, the reality of it is that we're all exposed out there like that little sheep. Like, and, and at any moment our time could be up. But we think, oh, like, you know... Our rights are supposed to protect us, or something I like that. I must admit, though, I, I still, 
have a, there's a, a dramatic level of comfortability that comes with living in a society that isn't like the United States, where you know uh, where I mean, you know everyone's. I'll, I'll argue with I, that, but I'll let you I'll, go. I'll, yeah, I, I just uh, there's there's a level of comfort that I take from knowing that I don't have a gun in this house. There's very likely not a gun in the next house along. There's very likely not you know one that. across yeah, the street. Yeah, I reckon more people would it, might would have it, would, it, would it worry you? Would it worry you if there was? Uh, that's if, a, if he that's was a if he was a responsible person. Oh, well, no. that's true. Absolutely. Do, do I know? And, and, absolutely and, and, and not. And ninety nine point nine point nine nine eight percent of people are responsible people. Yeah, one hundred percent. Here's here, here's my view on it: is there could be an Uncle Keith in every single house on my street. I'd Would, love to live in that street. <laughs> 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 Talk the, about narcissism. <laughs> definition <laughs> of fucking <laughs> ringing, it, ringing in the new year. It'd be uh, bloody. I mean, what a, what a great <laughs> place to live. What a great place. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be scared about I wouldn't be scared about guns at all. But when I go sometimes, you know, through a drive somewhere in Brisbane City outskirts, something like that, late on a Friday night and I see the sort of people hanging around my car, shit like that, I'm like there's there's some there's some young people out there that I, I just recently had a um had a friend uh drop his um drop his single. Um he's he's an Aussie hip hop artist and um and he and he put his Put his um, single out. Very much upcoming. In in the film clip, he uh, he exposes um, the handle to to what looks like a weapon, and I, and I was curious as to whether you think that might be. It, it was like presumably a handgun, but would that likely be a replica or what yeah, do you think? Yeah, there's, there's plenty in, of replicas out there that would be very very difficult to to, to distinguish, to distinguish, distinguish yeah. from from a real one, really, unless you really got really close to it. A lot, a lot of people do armed robberies with replicas. It's very hard to get a pistol illegally. <laughs> mm. I mean, or it costs you a lot of money. I mean, you, mm. you know, I mean, anything that's illegal, it doesn't mean you can't get one. It just means it costs you more money. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. as soon as you make something illegal, it doesn't mean it's not going to be there. Yeah. It's just, it's just going to cost you more money. And that's yeah. basically what it is. It becomes an industry. But um, I mean, you know, do I want people to carry firearms around because they'll make the place safer? No, I don't. I really don't. Um, and getting back to what you said before, Chris, I mean, everyone, everyone brings up the United States as a, you know, this gun-toting society, and then certainly it, it, it's out of control. But if you look at it in perspective, I mean, and you look at the stats, I mean, hey, there's 26 countries in front of it. Um, Mexico is one of the worst. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and firearms are illegal in Mexico. So, I mean, right. everyone draws yeah, these yeah. parallels. And, and, I mean, as a shooter, I, I mean, I've made it my business to know all these things because, I mean, I, I feel like an endangered species. I mean, yeah. I, I have I have felt the wrath of of being a minority and being persecuted by a majority. I mean, I, you know, I, I can assimilate to the Jews in Germany in the First World War. <laughs> but, I mean, most people I know own firearms. And I can say, you know, people I've shot with have been judges and bloody... Brickies and doctors and yeah, I mean you know, people who shoot firearms are, come from all yeah. all facets of, of society. And, and I suppose, but, but but by and large, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people who own firearms are, are, yeah. Are, yeah. Are, are, are great guys, Good great people, people. Yeah. females, males doesn't matter. But but we get demonised because of the point zero one one percent that 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 give a shit. Exactly, I mean, and it's yeah. easy. It's easier for governments and it's easy for any political party or anti gun people to, to concentrate on people who obey the law. It's 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 easy to make it's easy to put restrictions on people who, who conform to the law. It's it's very difficult to put conditions on people who act outside the law. Mm. And, and and for fucking ever we are being victimized by, you know, governments because hey, we're a minority. We're a minority. I mean, fuck me. I mean, mind you, we're a fairly big minority. I mean, I don't think people realise that there's probably yeah. two and a half million people in Australia that own firearms. I mean, yeah. it's 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 big enough to be politically have, have a bit of political clout, and 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 fire, firearm owners have had to resort to this to to protect our our hobby or our sport or whatever. Yeah, and and it's interesting that it, there is that um, that element of persecution for you in in you know in something that you really enjoy and something you spent your life doing and that idea of you know I've been roped in with a whole bunch of people who are essentially you know ha having mental issues or or whatever like and um and to be associated with that and persecuted it's sort of it's a perspective that most people probably wouldn't have of gun owners you know what i mean so you know everybody's vulnerable to that sort of to that sort of thing, and uh, and and nobody likes to feel outcasted. Well, 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 firearms aren't very cuddly animals. I mean, 
No. You've only yeah. got to mention firearms and it, 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 it evokes this sort of, uh, oh, you know, this, mm. this, this terrible thing. And people get, you know, I mean, they get, get frightened by it. I mean, mm. me and my wife, when I first started, you know, having firearms, I mean, I think she's quite... She's quite kosher with the fact now, but, but I mean, urge, early on, I mean, she was probably a little bit hesitant, but, I mean, she never grew up with firearms. She was mm. never exposed to firearms. Um, does she want to shoot firearms? No. Have I ever insisted she encouraged does? Encouraged her no? to? Well, I have encouraged her, but then I thought, this is probably not a good thing. <laughs> 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 I, mean, uh, I mean, why would you teach somebody then something? Then you thought better could, of yeah, it. Yeah, I did. Uh, my man. I thought my this, man. this could come back to bite me, you know. Uh. <laughs> Oh, shit, Keith. Well, it's been, it's been fucking awesome to have this no, chat with you. Do you want to stop now? We can keep going for hours. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, well, we might wrap things up there, folks. Uh, Chris has got a bounce. He's got a uh, hot date. So uh, yeah. we might order some pizza and uh, mm. we'll catch you on the, on the 21 side. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got... We, we, we're going to break down the BJ Penn um, Yair card should for, we, should we ma- for, oh, for the well. weekend. We might even just touch on who, who, who do you think, Danny? Like, who, who's your pick? Don't know, don't know. I, I I would love to see BJ make a comeback, but um, logic sort of uh, logic sort of tells me that maybe his time has passed. You guys are talking in tongue here. <laughs> Sorry, Keith, we diverted. This is actually we didn't sort of let you know, but this is actually a mixed martial arts podcast. Mm. We've, it's a bit of an aberration that we've we've had oh. a chat with you. It's been fucking it's been yeah, fucking I, awesome. I did martial arts as a mm. child. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I really I really think BJ will hopefully be better like uh, under you know under the back under the Marinoviches and 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 certainly you know training at Jackson's there I think that'll make him really sharp um I Yair is arguably probably the biggest savage coming up in that division at the moment and it, and it's going to be a, a hell of a tough test for BJ at 45 but you know forever a fan Two-time world champion. What's his uh, What's his keys to victory? Oh man, pistol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> potentially, mate. We could potentially having it could potentially be a firearm. But look, I, I think if if BJ is probably going to get it anywhere, he's he's renowned for his boxing. But I think if he can get him to the ground, that's probably where it lies for BJ. BJ is a uh, the 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 fastest non-Brazilian ever to to win a world title in in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Shit. Yeah. Shit. 40, right. 45 will stop him. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Keith. Peace out, people. We'll catch you next time.